We're going back to New York City, but Manhattan has changed over the past 8 months. Civilians and JTF personnel in Lower Manhattan have formed a civilian militia called the Peacekeepers, but are under constant threat of Cleaners, Rikers and Last Man Battalion. Each of these factions has evolved over the past few months, evolving both their lore, new archetypes and new AI. And old AI has changed now, so let's see what the changes are all about. Also, Hunters. The cleaners are former sanitation workers, like garbage men, janitors and custodians, who lost everything during the outbreak. Formed by Joe Farrow, they are convinced that the only way to save the city from the virus is to burn everything down, including its people. After the division eliminated Joe Farrow and lost more than half of their manpower and napalm supply, the cleaners were weakened to the point that they are no longer a threat to the JTF. Or so it seemed. After Pharaoh's death, Vivian Conley, one of Aaron Keener's rogue agents, rose to the top of the cleaner hierarchy. However, the cleaners don't know Conley is one of Keener's lieutenants. The cleaners we're encountering on Coney Island and in Lower Manhattan aren't the same from Midtown Manhattan eight months ago. They have evolved. Partially due to Conley's knowledge as a chemical engineer, cleaners have developed new toys. Let's see how. Returning are the Assault, Rusher and Heavy, both similar to the first game. The Assault will have an Assault Rifle with a Flame Tower with a tank on their back. Elite and named enemies will still rush you if you shoot their tanks. The Rusher returns with his Shield and Axe, although the Shields seem to be a lot stronger now. The Heavy is similar in that he will be wielding a Flamethrower and has one or multiple tanks of Napalm on his body, but he will have destructible armor similar to other tanks in the game, creating new weak points. Three archetypes are returning, the Sniper, Engineer and Controller, although they have changed. The Sniper, besides sniping, will deploy an RC car with an incendiary payload that launches itself when you come too close, so you have a Toys R Us car flying in your face. The Engineer deploys an incendiary turret that launches a napalm mortar instead of the machine gun they used to have. The devs called it the napalm goo turret and it denies you from taking cover. The controller will now have artillery drones that drop bombs on your position as opposed to the name palm RC cars from before, so they can now more easily reach you too. Although the cleaners were a favorite among many, we're moving on to another returning faction, the Rikers. The Rikers are escaped convicts from Rikers Island, a high security prison near Manhattan. Rikers are hardened criminals that come from various gangs. After the green poison was raging across the city, LeRae Barrett took advantage of an administrator who helped her and the remaining inmates escape from the prison. In Manhattan, the Rikers reveled in the chaos of the pandemic, threatening to plunge Manhattan into the Stone Age again. Before that was possible, the JTF and Division managed to take out Barrett, scattering and forcing them to retreat underground. Although unknown if they have a specific new leader, the Rikers 8 months later have formed a coalition with Keener's lieutenants James Dragoff and Theo Parnell. The Rikers aren't the same as before though. Although there still remains a core of Rikers from Rikers Island, in the past 8 months they have recruited new members from new groups. Consequently, they have become more experienced, exhibiting more teamwork and smarter gameplay in combat. Other than their AI, the thrower, heavy, sniper and tank have changed. The thrower, rather than throwing frag grenades, will now throw nail bombs that are proximity detonated and cause bleed damage. It fits more within the style of the Rikers. The heavy weapons now deploys a stationary machine gun that he will use to lay down fire and suppress you and your allies. Even if you manage to kill him, others will still be able to get on that machine gun. The sniper is radically different than before. Other than being equipped with a marksman rifle, he's equipped with a deployable shield and taser. This allows him to set up almost anywhere, easily allowing him to flank you and stun you with his taser. The tank has changed in a similar way. Tanks are equipped with a large ballistic shield that they didn't have before, that has flasher on its front side, able to flash you when targeted. It complements it with a nail gun in the other hand that has a slow rate of fire but can do quite a lot of damage and cause you to bleed. If you manage to shoot the tank on its back, the flasher will explode in a large flashbang, blinding not only the tank itself, but everyone who is behind it. 
and their final archetype, the leader or OG Rikers as the devs call them, are experienced Rikers that have been around since the beginning. They're very elite in the sense that they use more cover and cover teammates, as well as they apply an overheal buff to every Riker in their vicinity. It's important to take out these first as any overheals will be immediately disabled once you do so. Although not returning as its own faction, the last man battalion or LMB will return too. The LMB are a private military contractor in Manhattan that was hired by prestigious Wall Street corporations to protect their assets during the outbreak. During the pandemic they were abandoned and aimed to retake New York City and establish a new world order under leadership of Lt. Col. Charles Bliss. After Keener's betrayal and the JTF and Division's assault on their headquarters, Bliss was eliminated and the LMB collapsed. In the following months they were recruited by the Black Tusk. Not every archetype from the first game is returning, but some appear among the Black Tusk ranks. The LMB Rusher, Support and possibly Tank will return. The Rusher will replace the drone operator as the Russian class using their classic style. Assault rifles from afar and shotguns in close range. Elite Rushers will use their flashbangs in close proximity too. The Support will drop a hive or support station that regenerates armor and health. Elite supports can even overheal their fire team, and if their station survives, it drops medkits. Other than the LMB joining their ranks, the Black Tusk will deploy two new variants of the Warhound. One is a Grenadier, and the other is a Machine Gunner. The Grenadier moves around and launches three explosive grenades in quick succession. The Elite Grenadier Warhounds will shoot shock grenades, even more dangerous. The Machine Gunner keeps moving, trying to flank you, and has a Machine Gun on its back that can fire in 360 degrees. Respectively, they will have weak points on their knees and back. When triggered, these result in them collapsing to the ground. Imagine if you have all three Warhounds in one battle, that's gonna be intense because you have to be really smart in when you use cover and how you use it and when you shoot. However, the Black Tusk will have an elite sub-faction. When playing legendary missions, the Black Tusk are replaced with the White Tusk because they will be clothed in all white gear. It's not confirmed if these are solely LMB soldiers, but it doesn't seem that they are. Other than changing their AI, making them smarter, they change the core essence of each archetype. For example, the tank will have a wasp hive instead of a healing one and will try to get in close range with you to make sure it's triggered and to damage you. And that's interesting stuff if you ask me. It adds a whole new experience to the legendary missions, which obviously will a lot be a lot more difficult as it is, but also a little bit more interesting this way. Holding out against Keener, his lieutenants and the remaining factions in Lower Manhattan is a group called the Peacekeepers, a civilian militia made of both battle-hardened survivors and former JTF members. After Keener going rogue, the community under leadership of Paul Rhodes rejected division agents thinking they couldn't be trusted. Now they allow agents to pass through the base of operations haven, but they aren't fond of the division yet. That's something we'll have to fight for. The Hunters are returning both to New York City and Washington DC to find for us, or as Devs mentioned, find us, hinting at missions or at least hints about them. It was suggested that the Hunters will ambush us, but there was also another faction teased by a developer that will ambush us in a similar way, but they're not Hunters. For now we're calling them non-Hunters because we have no idea who they are, but that's, that's really interesting. I'm excited to see that Massive not only is bringing back factions from the first game, like the Cleaners, Rikers and LMB, but are evolving both their story and AI based on what happened in the past 8 months. I'm psyched to dive into their lore, which I'll make sure to cover on the channel, but also to fight these new archetypes and see how they perform in combat. It's good to have a decent civilian faction on our side, as opposed to the JTF from the previous game who just waved at the enemy. Hopefully they're capable enough, but if the devs are to be believed, they are. And the most exciting faction, or actually factions, to return and to be introduced are the Hunters and Non-Hunters. I'm seriously excited for more Hunters and hopefully lore that comes with them and covering at least a little bit of info about them. I'm truly psyched about the Non-Hunters and who they can be. If you guys have any ideas on who they can be, let me know in the comments down below. I don't think it's an underground faction as some people mentioned. Perhaps they will be rogue agents, which, which kind of makes sense because they are very elite and they have a grudge against us. I guess all we can do is wait. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please show it by liking or disliking the video based on what you thought of it. If you disliked, however, let me know why so I can improve. 
Let me know what you're most excited about regarding the new and returning factions, their archetypes, the AI and all. If you're all about the lore, be it The Division or other games, make sure to subscribe because I'm covering it all. Hopefully, I'll see you in Lower Manhattan and with that said, I'll talk to you soon. Peace out.